So degree of a term. So if I had, uh, let's just have one term up here, 4x squared. Let's start there. The degree of a term is the total number of letters I see. So don't say 1. There's an x, but how many x's are there? 2. There's 2 x's times a 4. You guys see what I'm saying? So the degree of this term is it's a second degree. Yes. So what about this term here? Seven. Nope. I see seven C's, but is that the total number of letters? I see the total number of variables. How many total variables? Nine. It's a ninth degree. Black belt. A ninth degree monomial, if you want to be very specific. Let me let that sink in. I didn't understand this how, how, how uh, well, let me say this. So, so the idea is just count the total number of letters. I see 1A, 1B, and 7C. So I see a total of 9. Why did we come up with that? Because if I let A, B, and C change, this gives me an idea how much the whole thing changes. It's like to a ninth power total. Because what can I put values in? All three of these things. So it gives me how, an idea how quickly it grows. So a second degree is not going to grow as quickly as a ninth degree. Does that make sense? If I square something, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, that's growing kind of quick. But if I raise something to a ninth power, shit, that thing's good. 2 to the ninth power is big. So this gives me an idea how quickly this thing I'm working with is growing. Yes? You said the degree of term is the total number of what? Variables that I see. Okay. I'd be very careful. So I see seven Cs yeah. plus a B plus an A, so that's nine total variables I see. Don't just say, I see A, B, C, there's three. There's seven C's. Yeah, so take that into account. Yeah? So it won't matter what number is in front like that. Exactly. This doesn't matter at all. When I talk about degree, it doesn't matter. Because can two change? No, it's always two. So it's not going to talk about how quickly I grow as I change my variable values. That's what really involves is in degrees. So what if you have like two A, three C, how many degrees there? Like that? Well, then I have a little bit of work to do first. What is the one omial I'm talking about then? Six. Six AC. And then what is the monomial's degree? Second. Second. Because I see an A and a C, so there's two variables total. Second degree. So if they give you something you've got to simplify, do that first, and then you can step back and say, what's the degree? This will be second degree. All right, let me blow your minds a little bit. What about that? That is a polynomial. That is a monomial. First degree. So that would mean that you see a variable. Right? Because the degree is the total number of variables that you see. Well, how many variables do I see? Yeah, nothing, None. Nothing. So that is a zero, zero, degree. zero degree. And I really want to make this make sense. If, if I said I'm working with a five, then no matter what you make x or whatever equal, it's always going to be... Five. five. If I graph this, isn't it going to be this? So how quickly is it growing? Is it growing? No. Not at all. So that's why the zero degree makes it zero growth. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of related to how quickly the thing would grow as I let my variable change. I don't care what variable I let change. Five is five. It ain't growing. It's a zero degree. How many variables <laughs> do I see? None. <coughs> In fact, this is five times one, right? This is going to freak you out a little bit more, but... What is 1? x to the 0. Is it x to the 0, 1? We talked about that last time. Yes. So then you can say, you can, then if you write it like that, you can say it is the power. The power is 0, so it's a 0 degree. I think you said that. Right. All right, good. Yeah, you don't have to go all that far. That's weird. So the degree is always in the variable. Exactly. The total number of variables in a term. Because if it wasn't, you could just do the math. It's like this? You mean? Like if it was 5 to the second. Oh, yeah, exactly. Then it would just be a number. It'd be 25. So 5 squared is not second degree because 5 squared is 25. So what is it actually? 25. Zero. Zero with degree. Zero. Because how many variables do you see? None. Zero. I like it. So if I really wanted to be evil. What degree is that? One. It's the first degree, yeah. So it's not really evil. 
I'm not going to do that because, again, I'm just like, let me trick you. That's just dumb. But that's a number. It's a big-ass number times yeah. A. How many variables do I see? One. One. So just focus on what the idea is. Perfect. Degree always means the total number of variables I see. How are we doing so far? And I know. Trust me. Come on now. Uh, I'm much more I'm worried that you can do the work than you can remember all the little words, but it's still important. You still have to know what a binomial is. You still have to know what a monomial is. You still have to know how to find the degree of a polynomial. It's still important. Uh, let's see. What about, so that's the degree of a term. What about the degree of a polynomial? Did you take the, the largest degree term? Kick ass. Exactly right. So if I had, for example, if I had uh, 4x squared a plus uh, 6ab minus 7, what degree is this term? Uh, 3. Third degree, I like it. Two so x's and an a is third degree. What degree is this? Second. 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 What degree is this? Zero. Zero. So that's how I get the terms, and then the degree of the whole thing is the highest degree I see. So this is a what degree trinomial? Third. Third. This is a third degree trinomial. To make it sound really, really all formal. Trinomial because it's got three terms. Third degree because the highest degree I see is third. So it's the it's the term that kind of wins. It's the term that's going to grow the biggest, quickest. And again, this is just so that map just can communicate with each other. So I want to let you in on our language. Hey Frank, I got an eighth degree trinomial. Oh, and just by saying that, I know a lot of shit about it. Really quickly, I know I know a lot of stuff about it. Uh, and you're like, that's great for you. But now you do too. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let me make sure I don't miss anybody here. Okay. So let's. Uh, one thing that happens in this section is when I subtract polynomials, people forget something very basic. So. Yeah. I said, you know, yeah, simplify. What's the first thing you should do? <clears throat> Uh, exactly. Why, why are these parentheses here? Just to say that's a polynomial. What's in front of it? No. No. One. One. Oh. So nothing. So I could just cha take those out. One times these is just stays the same. But what's in front of this guy? Negative. Yeah. So it becomes negative y. Negative y, negative y squared. Plus seven y. Good. Plus seven y. Negative eight. Minus eight. And then you can just put your like terms together like always. I like it. I always get somebody to forget to do that or do that wrong. Just take the negative and change all the signs in that second dude. Yeah, yeah. Multiply by negative. So negative times that is negative. Negative times negative is positive. So, okay. I'm, so you, I'm thinking that if you were to change all the, the signs, because that's what the way my brain is. Totally. But you have the subtraction in there, and you still have it on the bottom, isn't it? No, no. So, so that's in front of what? That's in front of this. So, what's the what's the? If you change the sign of y squared, it becomes what? What is it currently? It's currently negative or positive? Positive. Good. So it becomes negative. Okay. That's that's so the right little. If you took the negative minus the negative, is there's a negative or, or subtraction there? Then that would. But that's that subtraction is the negative. Okay. So another way to write subtraction is plus negative one times. Okay. You can write it like that if you want to. And then it would be plus negative y squared, which you can write as just minus y squared. Oh. <laughs> which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe, maybe. Because you get the same answer, right? Totally. What answer do I get? What do I, what's three uh, y squared? I can put it together two with? Two y squared yeah. plus five oh. y minus four. So it would be two y squared plus five. 
Good. Plus, plus five y. Negative four. Minus four. And minus four. I like it. You guys see what I'm doing here? So I don't have to. If you yeah. want something visual to kind of organize, instead of rewriting the whole thing and wasting time, just use different underlinings. So it's a nice visual then. Or rewrite it, whatever helps for you. Or neither, if you just put them all together, it's great. Um, oh, there's one little section that really kind of gets at this directly. Let me just write this up here and see what you guys think. Write the opposite <coughs> of, uh, make a number check, there you go. <coughs> negative five. This is distributed negative sign, pretty much. Yeah, it's just what we did there, it's just not in a problem. Just have it sitting there. So, like you said, the opposite of this would be negative Yeah, just change all the signs. So that's really that says the opposite of when I see minus something, it's the opposite of this. So then I wrote the opposite over there. So that's they do have a whole section like this. Just don't say, I love it when people say that equals this. That's not true. Right? The opposite of that. So you can say this go, you can write like an arrow, this goes to that. I'm cool with the arrow. Just don't put the equals because that's not true. Five don't equal negative five. So don't say it does. A little arrow says, when I do this shit you asked me to do, it becomes this. <laughs> right? That's what that means. I like it. Excuse my damn language. All right. Okay. Just want to make sure I don't miss anybody. All right. That's basically 5-2 right there. Is there any specific questions? I'm sort of trying to let us out a little early, if you'll let me. What's happening next week, by the way? Spring break. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it's in a good place. Yeah? Well, we just started getting in. The earliest we might have a quiz would be this Thursday, so we'll talk about it tomorrow. But I doubt it. Yeah, that's up to you. Oh, well, I mean, by Thursday, I think you should be done with 5-1. It won't be late if you don't turn in because you always have until the day of the test. Section 5-1. Our big test isn't until Yeah, the big test ain't until April something or other. So the quiz 5-1 and 5-2? Yeah, we just had a test, so it's not until the one. Huh? Uh, that was five one five two. We'll talk about it tomorrow, but I doubt we'll have one of those things.